these simple input fields look relatively harmless. But if you're not careful, the limitless possibilities that we love about generate blocks can be the same thing that turns a project into a chaotic, unmaintainable, and inconsistent mess. Every time you add padding or border radius or font size to an element in generate blocks, you're making a decision. And across an entire build, you might end up making hundreds or even thousands of these decisions. Now, one mistake a lot of new people make is just putting random values inside these fields. And that might look good in isolation, but once you expand that into an entire project, it starts to make your site look inconsistent and creates a real maintainability nightmare. For example, if you decide that the section padding on your website is just too small, then you're forced to go back through page by page and section by section updating all those values. If the thought of that gives you PTSD to the last project you worked on, then this video is for you. What you need is a framework. A framework is just a simple system that narrows down all these limitless options, keeps things consistent, and speeds up your builds, not only as you're building them out for the first time, but in the long run as you maintain and update your site. And the good news is you don't need to download and learn an entire framework like Bootstrap or Tailwind in order to get most of the major benefits. You can create your own mini framework right inside Generate Blocks using three key components. That's custom properties, utility classes, and patterns. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can get started building your own framework right here inside Generate Blocks. But before we jump in with custom properties, here's a word from today's video sponsor. PyCalendar is the most flexible and most lightweight calendar plugin available for WordPress. In just five minutes or less, you can turn any post on your website into an event that will appear on a front-end calendar. Our obsessive approach to stability and performance means that you can trust PyCalendar to do exactly what it's supposed to do without updates that will end up breaking your entire site. But no bloat doesn't mean limited features because PyCalendar comes packed with tons of amazing features like recurring events, add to calendar links, adaptive time zones, ACF support, e-commerce integrations, and so much more. We also are currently offering a lifetime deal, which you can grab by visiting our website at PyCalendar.com. You can think of custom properties as nicknames. For example, if you wanted some small padding, you could create a custom property called padding small and assign a value like eight pixels to it. The benefit to this is every time you wanna use small padding, you just reference that variable instead of trying to remember was I using five pixels or six pixels or maybe it was 0.5M. As long as you point to that small padding variable you created, you're gonna keep that same consistent spacing every time you use it. Now you might hear me or other people talk about custom properties as variables, and you'll see why that is later on in the video, but just know that we're using those two terms interchangeably. A good analogy is the contacts in your phone. You probably don't wanna memorize the 10 digits that make up your mom's phone number, so instead you save her name as the contact. This is kinda of like the custom property. That way, whenever you wanna call her, you just click on mom and your phone figures out those 10 digits that make up her phone number. Custom properties work the exact same way. The power of variables is that it narrows down your choices. Instead of an infinite number of possibilities you could put inside the input field, you have a small controlled set of variables that you're gonna use throughout your build. This makes things more consistent, and because you're referencing a variable instead of the raw values, if you ever decide to change that value later, you can update it inside your variable and everywhere you reference that variable will get changed throughout your website. Just like if your mom changes her phone number, you change it inside her contact and everywhere you've used mom as that contact will automatically be updated. In fact, you've already been using custom properties for a long time inside Generate Press. If you decided you wanted to make the blue in your color palette just a little bit more blue, you would go inside the customizer into your colors and change that blue value. Since you've referenced this blue swatch everywhere throughout your website, this new value is gonna get assigned everywhere you've been using that blue before. And that's the power of custom properties. Except we're not just limited to colors in our color palette, we can use custom properties for any kind of CSS value. Now, Generate Blocks doesn't give us a way in the UI to create custom properties, so we're gonna to need to do this writing CSS. But don't worry, it's really simple. Let's jump in and take a look. Here I am on the back end of my site inside of my child theme style.css file. Now, if you don't have a child theme, I'll link to a video on how to set one up in the description. However, you could always use the customizer's additional CSS or your favorite code snippet plugin. Here, we're gonna globally scope our variables, which just means they'll be able to be accessed from any element we drop on the page. To do that, we're gonna type in a colon followed by the word root. 
Then we'll just go ahead and open and close our curly braces. I'm gonna add a return here just so we can be typing in between them. Now creating a custom property is simple. It always starts with two dashes. So we'll go ahead and type those in, which is just the syntax we need for writing a custom property. After that, you can give your custom property a name, anything you want. In this example, I think we're gonna create some padding variables to narrow down the padding values we'll use to keep things on our site consistent. Now I imagine we'll need a few different sizes, so we'll call our first custom property padding XS for extra small. After the name, we'll just type in a colon and then I'm gonna add a space, and here you can declare the value you want to assign to your custom property. Now since this is extra small padding, we're gonna go with an extra small number. I like multiples of eight, so we're just gonna start with eight pixels. Now it's important to note that you can use any valid CSS unit here. I'm just using pixels for simplicity's sake, but feel free to use M or rim or whatever's most appropriate for your use case. After that, I'll finish this line with a semicolon. On the next line, we'll write our next padding variable, and then we'll repeat this process until we've created an entire set. So fast forward here and you can see we've set up five custom properties. These padding values from extra small all the way to extra large using easy to remember t-shirt sizes. Now you can use whatever naming convention you like best, but I found two things are important when setting up custom properties. First, I prefer to write the whole word like padding instead of abbreviating it. Yes, it is a little bit more typing, but it's easier to remember instead of coming back a week later and having to look up how you abbreviated everything. The second is to be consistent in your naming convention. If you like t-shirt sizes, try using those as often as you can. For example, if you were to set up custom properties for your border radius, you can use the same t-shirt sizing naming convention for all of your values. Again, this just makes things easier to remember. But let's go ahead and test our custom properties and make sure they're working. I'll go ahead and save this file. We'll go into pages and add a new page. Here, I'll just drop a container onto the page, which of course doesn't have any padding whatsoever. Instead of typing in a random pixel value, I'm gonna assign one of the custom properties we just created. I'd like to do about 60 pixels or so of padding on the top and maybe 30 on the right. And if we remember back to the custom properties we created, padding large is 64 and padding M is 32, so I think those two will work perfectly. To reference a custom property, we have to use a simple var function. Var is just short for variable, which is why we keep calling these variables and custom properties. So to reference it, we need to type in the word var and then open our parentheses. Inside of that, we just type in that custom property name. So for this one, we wanted our padding large, which is just double dash padding hyphen L, and then we can close our parentheses. You'll see now our container has padding at the top of it, because generate blocks is referencing that padding value we set up in our custom property. We can of course copy that and paste it into the bottom value as well. And now we have that same amount of padding on both the top and bottom of our container. We also need some padding on the left and right. So again, I'm gonna type in var and open my parentheses. We'll type in a double dash and then padding M and close our parentheses. I'll go ahead and copy that and paste it into the left. And now you can see we have that padding on the sides of our container as well. Let's go ahead and publish these changes and go inspect things on the front end. I'll open the page here. We'll right click and go to our inspector. And then I'll make sure to select that section. You can see I have our section selected here. And if I go into the computed value, you'll see we have 64 pixels on the top and 32 on the left and right. That means our custom property is registered properly and it's being assigned to our section here that we created. But let me show you the power of the custom properties. If we go in and change those, we'll see it automatically gets updated on the front end of the site. I'll go back in here to the back end, go back into my style.css file, and for our large value, let's say we wanted to change this to 96, and maybe we'll change this padding XL to 120. Now we didn't reference the XL, but I just wanted to keep this spacing consistent. We'll go ahead and update that file. We'll refresh things on the front end. And now my section has 96 pixels of top and bottom padding instead of the 64 it had before. This means we have one place to globally control all those spacing variables, which is gonna make things a whole lot easier when you think about an entire site that's gonna have dozens or even hundreds of sections on it. We're gonna to wanna to keep all the sections on our website consistent, but I don't wanna to have to type in these variables every single time. And that's where the second part of our framework, the utility classes come into play. 
You've probably started to experiment with classes inside Generate Blocks since they introduced the new global style system in the 2.0 release. Utility classes are set up to perform a simple action that you're going to repeat over and over again on your website. Like in this example, we wanted to add a specific variable for the top and bottom padding and a different one for the left and right. Instead of having to remember how to do that every time over and over again, we can assign those variables to a utility class in our system. So instead of having to type them in every time, we just add this utility class to any section and those variables are automatically put in there. Let me show you how that works. Since we already have this section set up with the padding values we like, let's go ahead and create a utility class. I'll go up to our global styles here and we're going to call this class section. So I'll just type in the word section and then hit create. Now here we're presented with a few options and since we already assigned all these values to the local block, what we want to do is move those local block styles over to our class. If you hadn't set up your styles yet and you were starting from scratch, you could start with a blank style. But in this case, we've already done the work and we just want to move all that from the local block over to our class. So we'll choose move the local block styles and hit start editing. At the top of the global styles panel, we can see that we're editing our section class and all these values are here inside the padding. So let's test it out and see if it works. We'll go ahead and go back to our page and I'll just add a new container here. I'll go ahead and give it a background color just so we can see things a little bit easier. Now we want to add our section padding to this container. So instead of going in here and referencing all of our variables, we can just go up here and search for section and select it from the list. And now our new container has the same set of padding values, which it's now getting from the class. We didn't have to set this up manually every time. All we have to do is just add this simple utility class. If all of this is new to you, then you might be wondering when do you use a custom property and when do you use a utility class? Think of custom properties like ingredients in your kitchen, maybe flour or salt or oil. Utility classes are like recipes. They tell you how much flour, salt, or oil to add to your dish. So if you need just a single value like a border radius or in this example, a padding value, you're gonna wanna do that with a custom property. But if you're gonna to wanna to assign values to an element, like in this case, we wanted to assign different padding values to our section, then we're gonna to need to use a recipe or a utility class. To this point, our section is coming together pretty nicely, but we don't have everything we need to create a real section. First of all, we need to change the HTML tag from a div to a section, and we're probably gonna want an inner container inside of it in order to control the content width of our section. And that's where the third piece of our framework, patterns, come into play. You can think of patterns like putting together the final dish. It includes multiple recipes, all of which have different ingredients. We can do all of that inside the Generate Blocks UI, combining our custom properties, our classes, and now multiple elements in order to create a pattern that we can reuse every time we want to add a section that has everything done for us. Let me show you how we'd go about doing that. So back inside the editor, we're going to finish out the little details we need in order to make this reusable pattern really useful for us. The first thing we're going to do with our container selected is go to the settings panel and we're going to change the tag name from a div to a section. That's just going to ensure that we're using the right semantic HTML tag by default and we don't have to remember to go back and change that every time. The second thing we're going to need is an inner container and generate blocks gives us a handy little button to add an inner container. So we'll go ahead and click that and we can see this inner container is now on our page. In fact, if we open up the list view here, you can see we have our section with our inner container. I like to go ahead and rename these. So we'll call this section and save the changes. And we'll go into our container and I'm gonna rename this wrapper because that's the naming convention I prefer. Now, as a little side note, Generate Blocks is actually using custom properties in this inner container that they provide. With that inner container selected, I'll go to our settings. We'll go into our sizing and you'll see here in our max width, it's actually using this var GB container width. This is a custom property that the theme sets up just to make sure that our container width is consistent across the entire website. You can set up whatever you want that value to be inside of the customizer and then generate blocks just references that custom property here. So even if you didn't know it, you are already using custom properties if you are using this intersection feature. Now we got our section set up exactly how we want to reuse it throughout our entire website. So I'll just make sure that I have the outermost section selected and we're going to click on this three dot menu and go down to create pattern. Now I'm going to call this section just so it's easy for me to find. 
After that, you have an option to categorize your pattern. If you have a lot of patterns on your site and want to organize them, this is a great way to do it. Last is the option to create a synced or unsynced pattern. Since we're gonna control everything globally through our classes and variables, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that box and we can go ahead and hit add. As soon as we do that, our pattern is registered on the site and we can use it right away. So let's go ahead and delete what we have here and pretend we're starting a new page from scratch. I'll go ahead into my editor and I'm gonna type in a forward slash and start typing the word section. You'll see this has narrowed things down to a new option that wasn't available before. This is the pattern we created. You'll know it's a pattern because it always has this double diamond icon next to it. If we go ahead and click on that, it's gonna go ahead and pop a section onto our page. You'll see that this has already been renamed section just like we did before, and it has the section class already assigned to it, which of course references all of our variables. Inside of it is that wrapper, which we renamed here to wrapper, and it's using the defaults that came with it when we set up this originally in the first place. This makes adding a new section to your page super easy. You just type in forward slash section and you can add all the sections you need to your page. And just like that, you have the very beginning of your own Generate Blocks framework. We started with the custom properties, which really narrowed down our choices and make things more consistent. From there, we assign those variables to our utility classes, meaning we could add those variables really quickly and easily. Finally, we created a pattern, which is a collection of all those elements we put together in something that we're gonna reuse time and time again throughout our website. Of course, in this demo, we only created a section, but don't think that your framework is limited to only creating